Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited today because I have a guest, Laura. Laura, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I also have a hiking channel. Um, I have an Instagram, Adventures After You 75, and my hiking tra channel is Laura Leanne. And there right it is. There. <laughs> Laura creates a lot of uh, content about hiking and adventure traveling here in the US and beyond. Uh, she's gone on so many wonderful hikes really all around the world. And the reason we are here today is to talk and share our experience climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. So as you guys know, I climbed Kilimanjaro last year, 2021 in August via the Machame route. And then Laura climbed the mountain via a different route. I did. I actually did it in late December. So I summited December 31st. So only a couple months after. Okay. Um, and I did the Morongo route. Today, we want to kind of compare both of these routes, the Morongo route and the Machame route and understand what the differences are what uh, Laura's experience was like and then what my experience was. Before we get there, I did share a lot of videos about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro via the Machami route, including a documentary about the whole experience that you can check up here. I will also leave links to Laura's channel. She has a lot of valuable information about climbing the mountain from the Marango route. So for me, uh, Laura, the Machami route, we spent seven days on the mountain. How many days did you spend on the mountain from the Morongo route? Yeah, so the total you would spend is five or six days for the Morongo route. Um, I did in five, but you also can take kind of more of a uh, just one day kind of quick hike to rest your body and that would be a sixth day. So really the main thing or the main difference between the Machami route and the Morongo route is the, the length or the duration of time you're gonna be spending on the mountain. The Machami route, you will need more days on an average, yeah. the Morongo route is shorter. Now, I know uh, when it comes to the distance, the, the Machami route, we are covering about 36 miles. And then the Morongo route is a little bit longer, right? It's actually a little bit longer, even though it's shorter um, days fewer days, but um, fairly similar around 45 miles. The Machami route is known for being one of the routes with a high success rate. And then I know that with the Morongo route, you really have to be a competent hiker. You have to be fit in order to, to make it. Yeah, absolutely. Since it's in fewer days and longer, um, you definitely need to kind of make sure that you've done some training beforehand. With that said, um, it still it still does have a very high success rate. All of Kilimanjaro does have a very really higher success rate, but because you're kind of going in more altitude every single day, um, altitude sickness might be more of a issue. That's a good point because uh, at, uh, at high altitude or at high elevation, you want to give your body enough time to adjust to changes in elevation and it feels as if with the Morongo route, you don't have that much time. So unless you have experience hiking at elevation, it will be a little bit more challenging. Exactly. Yes. And like I do have experience uh, with the elevation. With that said, since I was just you know, only in Tanzania, I wasn't coming from much of another mountain beforehand. I was not acclimatized. So I am used to those higher elevation hikes from, from previous hikes, but at the same time, I wasn't really ready. So um, definitely that night before I was feeling it, but um, when I was kind of looking around in different huts, <laughs> I know a lot of people were feeling it. Awesome, so you mentioned huts and that's one of the major differences between both routes. On the Machame route, we are sleeping in tents. So there are uh, campgrounds that are established throughout the mountain. So every day we would uh, go to a certain camp and then basically the porters will pitch your tent. That's where you spend the night. But I know that's different on, on the Morongo route. So what does that look like? Yeah, you actually are staying in huts the entire time. So they can be a little bit smaller. So the very first night, I, um, I believe there were only there were three little beds and it was like a bunk bed and then one just regular bed. And then the other two nights, it would be three different bunk beds so six beds so every single place that you stayed you definitely were in more of a bunker feel mm -hmm. to it and then you're sharing it with a bunch of other climbers of course you were if you definitely had um, people in your group you'd be sharing it with them I actually was by myself with guides um, the guides were not in my group but uh, I would share them with different hikers so we also had different circumstances of when we climbed the mountain because it was right during the pandemic. And I think uh, the time we climbed, that's when uh, a lot of companies started taking people on the mountain. So on the Machami route, it's usually known for being uh, uh, a very busy route.
out so you will come across a lot of people but when we climbed the mountain it wasn't the case because you know people were a little bit hesitant about you know climbing during the pandemic yes exactly that was the same for me and i think normally more people would be in huts than um when i was actually there um i think the average would be most of the huts would be filled up um, i also was there um in december i think you probably got better weather than i did um every day at like 11 a.m it was just pouring so <laughs> i don't think that's super common but um yeah i think it is a lot more common to see a lot more people on the mountain i was gonna ask with the huts did you feel like you had good comfortable nights of sleep they were warm enough Ah, uh, yes, I, I brought my own sleeping bag and I do have like a high up elevation, good sleeping bag that, you know, well cost me a pretty penny so um, I definitely brought that but also like they were they were mattresses there for you so that's kind of what made it a little bit cheaper and um, less weight for the porters to be carrying because um, you didn't need those sleeping bags or sorry you didn't need the mattresses and you also didn't need an actual tent I'm curious about the number of porters because uh, for our group for example on the Machami routes because they still have to carry tents bedrolls and sleeping bags we probably had more porters Right. Did you have a small amount of porters for your team? What, what was yeah, it so it honestly, it still was, it was a cook. Um, it was your guide. There actually was like another guide and he was le learning how to be a guide. So okay. I, I didn't really talk to him much, honestly, but he just kind of like followed us around. Um, and then there was like a driver. Um, I think he like came up to camp one with us hmm. or something like that. But that was that. Oh, sorry. And then Porter. Sorry. Sure. And um, that would that would be it, though. Um, so uh, like I'm saying, uh, I think if you were doing any of the other routes, you'd need more porters, especially if you had more people. Sure. And uh, I think with more porters, that mean probably more money to pay for the climb. So with the company that I climbed the mountain with, it was a little bit pricey. Now, when it comes to all of these uh, tour operators, there are some that are local to Tanzania. Yeah. There are some uh, Western companies. Usually they have their admin teams in the US, UK. So it's usually a little bit more expensive, but uh, you agree that the price is probably more approachable and affordable on the Marangu route? Yes, I believe it's the it's the cheapest option and of course the shortest. Um, I paid, I believe it was $1,200. Um, and then that doesn't include like tipping your porters um, and everyone. But uh, for the most part, the longer you're up there, the more you know fees for Kilimanjaro sleeping up there. And every all of the porters, all of the cooks, they also have to be paying those fees as well. So the longer you're up there, the more fees they're having to pay. So the more you're probably you're you're yeah. just gonna be. Yeah, that's 100% true. More days on the mountain, yeah. more money to pay. I wanted to ask you about the situation with the, the toilets. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> what does that look like? Um, so for that route, um, I believe every every day there was some sort of either long drop or some sort of like porta potty situation. Um, I I was trying to think. I believe, and then like a lot of times halfway through a hike in the day, um, if you're on the mountain for like six or seven hours hiking that day, um, there's going to be some sort of nice little rest area, and there'll actually be some sort of long drop there as well. Um, there was never one like in your little bunker, but it would be fairly close by. Um, and then the actual summit day, there definitely was not one, which was <laughs> um, fine. But like unfortunate, like you saw a lot of toilet paper and stuff mm -hmm. on the trail, which broke my heart. But wow. For the Machame route, I saw some restrooms on the way as we're hiking mm. throughout the day. But I think the deal with the with the company we climb with is that when we get to camp, they would pitch a tent mm -hmm. and then it's lit like it's literally a whole toilet right there that you can use. I've never which, I've <laughs> never actually even experienced that. I'd love to like see one. It's crazy. I put a video out there on my channel just to show the whole thing, but it's it's really impressive. I didn't even expect it. You literally go in the tent and then, you know, take the seat up, you go about doing your business and then you just flush as if it's a full on toilet. Do you like still bring your own toilet paper in? So you I brought my own toilet paper, but I think I think they provided us toilet paper yeah. as well, so you don't really have to pack yours. Right. Yeah. Interesting. That was that was pretty impressive. I was like, wow, this is this is luxury <laughs> camping, <laughs> glamping at its finest. So on the Machame route, it's known for being one of the most 
scenic route. So yes. it's really beautiful because you are hiking through different climate zones. Yeah. Um, I liked when we got to see the uh, Cinesio Kilimanjaro, the trees that are unique to mm -hmm. Mount Kilimanjaro. That was pretty. And then uh, I remember early on when we were hiking through the, the rainforest, we were able to see some monkeys and some unique birds. Were there any special wildlife encounters on the Morongo route? So no uh, <laughs> special encounters. <laughs> um, I honestly, I did a safari right after, so I had like just such a wonderful time, but I would have loved to see like a giraffe as I was hiking. <laughs> um, but every day was totally different than, uh, than the day before, I guess, kind of thing. But at the same time, since you're going to the summit and coming right down, guess what? I've seen these trees before and I'm ready to go have a shower. <laughs> so that would be like a, a huge, not a huge negative, but definitely one of the negatives of it is your whole way down. You've seen that before. You're ready to be off the mountain, tired. Okay. Whereas a lot of routes, you know, you're going just from A to B or like a circle around it, those oh. kind of things. So on the Morongo out, you go up and down the same. The exact same. Oh, okay. So you that. would have come down the route that I went up I as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, so you're actually seeing a ton of people on your way down that are just like, like oh, you'll wow. be like two days out from a summit and someone will look like, sunburnt and terrible and you're like you must have just summited <laughs> and you're on your way down that was very common to see and you looked better earlier yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome guys thank you so much for watching if you have any other questions about climbing kilimanjaro in general about the morongo route or the machami routes please leave them in the comments and be sure to check Laura's YouTube channel. It's really fun. She always have great tips about hiking. And then her Instagram, I'm gonna leave it down below. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe. This is Habiba from The Trekking Pals. Laura was a wonderful guest in this yeah. episode today. I will see you soon on a new adventure. Bye.